What's up everyone, Johnny Roven here. Um, I wanna to talk to you guys about something that's pretty important. Um, <clears throat> so, in medical malpractice cases in California, pain and suffering is limited to $250,000 for pain and suffering, past and future pain and suffering. This was a law that was passed in the mid 70s and the law basically said that pain and suffering is capped and there has been zero inflation, zero anything for that. So if you take that money today and calculate it, it's really like 50,000 or so based in, you know, the 1970s dollars. It's a big big problem. So for me, I handle a lot of these kinds of cases. If a person dies, the family gets maximum 250 pain and suffering for the death. If a person has a lifetime, like let's say a doctor you know, negligently uh, causes someone to be paralyzed for life, yes, they could get you know different types of medical care, the cost of the medical care, but all the pain and suffering that they will endure for the rest of their life, doesn't matter their age, will be 250,000. It really cracks down a lot. I mean, if you think about it, the average the average person is making like forty thousand or so a year. That would be like six years of income. And don't forget, I mean, the two fifty will include cost. So a lot of these cases they cost you know thirty fifty thousand to try, uh, if not more, depending on you know who your experts are. So take that out and attorney's fees, which is statutorily made. So that could be another like 50, 75,000 or so of, uh, it, it goes through a calculation. So a person is really left with not much for a pain and suffering case. And let me tell you, it is horrendous, horrendous amount of work in order to pursue a medical malpractice case in California. Not only do you have to prove the negligence of a doctor, which you know that you need you essentially need an expert to do that but on top of that you're also proving the damages you're proving causation you're having to go up against a jury who believes in doctors and believes in hospitals um, it's very difficult and a lot of times uh, the patients they send arbitration agreements so you waive the right to a jury trial still it's capped at 250 so you know wrongful death let's say the doctor uh, or if a nurse kills someone, the family is left with 250. Uh, birth injury, the rest of your life you're gonna be paralyzed. Pain and suffering is capped at 250. Uh, you lose a limb, 250. Anything under the sun is 250. So an act that's coming out in 2020 is called the Fairness for Injured Persons Act, Fairness for Injured Patients Act, FIPA. Uh, that is going to raise the 250 cap for inflation. It's incredibly, incredibly important to take a look at this and to vote yes on this act so that there's actually some kind of justice for people that are the result of medical malpractice. And I mean, I'll tell you a little bit about me. So my father is a doctor, he's a physician. And so when I started practicing medical malpractice, it was, it was kind of weird, you know, kind of like a disloyalty kind of thing going against, you know, my dad's uh, line of work. But there are many doctors and medical providers out there that just make mistakes. They're humans too. Um, a lot of these hospitals, they're very understaffed and overworked and so they try and cut corners or, you know, just kind of let people fall by the wayside and people get very, very hurt. Not to mention, I mean, it's it, it's a very difficult task to go up against these uh, these medical providers. And pretty much the only voice that they have are the plaintiff's attorneys that are willing to file lawsuits and are willing to go up against the stigma of people who are, you know, just suing doctors and suing medical providers, uh, for this, that, and the other injury. That's why, I mean, it's very difficult to take on a medical malpractice case, let alone pursue a medical malpractice case. So take a look at this act. Um, it's, it, you know, there's there's a lot to it. There's a lot of victims out there. My family was actually a victim of medical malpractice. Um, my mother, she 
was pregnant back in the 90s and lost the baby due to medical malpractice, medical negligence, unfortunately. Um, so, you know, we could have had another sibling there. It's very it's sad. But this, ha this hits home. And there's many, many people out there that this happens to. And just because insurance companies have so much money and so much political power and so much corporate greed that it's very difficult to go up against these guys, even in litigation. I mean, when you sue hospitals, they have a lot of money to just go and fight you tooth and nail. And when they know that their whole exposure is just 250 on pain and suffering cases, you know, they kind of just shrug their shoulders a lot of times. I mean, I've had a case where they had zero, they put zero offer on the table, the entire lawsuit all the way through arbitration. These, these uh, medical providers, they have a ton, a ton, a ton of money. And it's very uh, medical provider friendly in California currently. It's a, you know, it's a huge, it's like a David and Goliath battle. So I implore you to take a look, FIPA, Fairness for Injured Patients Act, coming up next year, vote yes on it to increase the pain and suffering cap. It's a draconian, draconian cap, and definitely worth t taking a look at. And I'm gonna be talking more about this later. All right, take care.